In this video, I'm going to show you how to eliminate spam. Hi, I'm John Grubb from 4kcc.com. If this is your first time viewing one of our videos, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Also, as we go along, if you learn something new, how about hitting that like icon? I would absolutely appreciate it. Of course, if you have comments and questions, I welcome them also. All right, let's get started. I'm going to show you how to eliminate spam. We're talking about spam emails rather than spam from the Harmel Corporation. This is good stuff. But what we want to talk about is spam emails. Now, just so you know, spam is also called junk in some email programs. And I'm going to teach you how to eliminate spam. All right. I'm kidding you. As it is right now, you actually cannot eliminate spam. But I'm going to show you some steps, five of them actually, that will help you in dealing with the spam that you can't prevent. Truth is, even if you see a lot of spam in your email, it's kind of like an iceberg. You are only seeing the very tip. There's a lot more spam that never actually gets to your inbox. And the reason for that is that email providers have a spam filter and they catch a lot of spam emails and they're prevented from getting to your inbox. So the first thing we have to talk about is what is spam or junk? Here is the Merriam-Webster definition. Unsolicited, usually commercial messages such as emails, text messages, or internet postings. And they're sent to a large number of recipients or put in a large number of places. Let me give you a few examples. Here's a spam email that I received. It simply says, um, good night, I apologize the unexpected letter, but I'm sending you a letter for the purpose of acquaintance. And then it goes on to tell me that uh, Natalie, her friends call her Natalie, and et cetera, et cetera. And she's waiting for me to send a reply. Okay, that's strictly a spam email. I'm sure it was sent to a bazillion people. It's not anyone I know. And so that's a spam email. Let's take a look at another example. Now, this is a spam email that's actually trying to get me to click on some links. And if I were to do that, I would be taken to places that aren't safe. And they would ask to get my information, etc. The email appears to be from Wells Fargo. However, if I were to put my mouse any place where there's a link, the little bubble that comes up always shows the exact same address, whether I say yes or decline, or whether I click on transaction details, it says the same address. So this is also a spam email. Now on my blog, I've done a number of posts about email. And one of those is called Fighting Spam. And that's from back in April of 2019. If you're not familiar with my blog, I post six times a week. My posts are short, um, usually three to four minutes to read them. And I cover all kinds of computing topics. So if you'd like to take a look at this one called Fighting Spam, just go to 4kcc.com forward slash blog. And then why not sign up for our emails? At the very top, you'll see sign up for our blog emails. I think you'll find it very helpful. Okay, so now let's look at some things that you can do to fight spam. Remember, currently, there's really no way to eliminate spam. But what we need to try to do is control it. So let's look at some things that might help us control that. 
Here are some steps you should take. The first one, never unsubscribe from an email list unless you're positive you subscribed in the first place. This is a gimmick that spammers like to use. They'll send you a spam email and at the bottom, it will say unsubscribe or it will say to unsubscribe, click reply and put unsubscribe um, in the subject line. Those are all tricks. They are trying to find out whether your email address is actually valid. If you hit unsubscribe or reply, they now know they have a valid email address. And instead of getting rid of spam or junk email, you now will get more because they know they have a valid address. They will send you more. They will sell your email address to someone else and the spam will just continue to mount. Now let's suppose that you're not sure. Let's suppose that you've forgotten. Did I really subscribe to that list? Then what you want to do is say, okay, is this a legitimate company? For instance, we just bought a new bed at JCPenney. So now, of course, we get all these emails from JCPenney. When I bought the bed, um, it probably had a check mark that said, uh, you know, send me emails. I may not have noticed it, but I know that JCPenney is a legitimate company. With that in mind, I know that it would be safe to unsubscribe from that list, even though I may not remember that I did. But if you get a questionable email and you say, I, I don't recognize this company, it doesn't sound like a big company I would know, I don't remember subscribing to the list, then do not hit unsubscribe. Instead, continue on to the next step that I'm going to show you. Here's another mistake that people make in trying to control spam. A lot of people will just delete spam. That's not what you want to do. You want to do this step. Instead of deleting it, you want to mark it spam or junk. And that is actually the second step after the first one. If you can't unsubscribe or it's not safe to unsubscribe, then you move to this one. Instead of deleting it, you want to mark it spam. Every email program that I'm familiar with has the ability for you to mark something spam. And let me show you an example. Here is my Google email account. And I've highlighted an email from Southwest. And you see the preview on the right. Now, if this were spam, it's not, but let's say it was. If I just deleted it, I would continue to get emails from this particular email address. Rather than do that, since I have it highlighted, at the top, there are some icons. You see the one that looks like sort of like a stop sign with an exclamation point in it? If I put my mouse on that, you can see it clearly says report spam. That is what you should be doing. You should be reporting the email as spam rather than just hitting the trash can and deleting it. Now, I'm just showing you Gmail, but Yahoo, AT&T, Comcast, Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, the program, they all have the ability to mark something spam. A little word of caution. Here's what can happen. Remember that when you mark something spam, you are marking that email address. So here's a little trick that spammers will use. They will send the same spam email, identical, and they'll send it from multiple, sometimes dozens, sometimes hundreds 
of email addresses. So for instance, if you got a spam email about, let's say, Canadian drugs, and you marked it spam instead of just deleting it, you say, okay, good, I don't have to deal with that. Next thing you know, you turn around, and the exact same email is in your inbox about Canadian drugs. The difference is it's actually coming from a different email address. So as much of a pain as it is, you need to mark that email spam. Don't just delete it, mark it spam. And now things that come from that email address will be treated as spam or junk and they'll go into your junk or spam folder. Remember, even if they send multiple emails that are identical, they're from different email addresses, so you need to spam or mark as spam all of those email addresses. And that will clear that up. Okay, let's take a look at the next step. All right, you can use throwaway email addresses. I do these all the time. Some email services actually give you throwaway email addresses. And with throwaway email addresses, you simply create a fake email address. It gets forwarded to your inbox. If you see that you get a lot of spam to that email address, you simply delete or throw away the address. And then you've eliminated all that spam. If your email provider does not give you throwaway addresses, there are companies that provide software that will do the same thing. Most of them are not free, but they're not real expensive. And it might be worth the effort to keep the spam out of your email box. All right, let's continue on and look at the next step. Use BCC when you send emails and encourage other people to do the same. BCC, blind carbon copy. This is especially true if you're sending to multiple people who don't know each other. I'll give you an example, this was not exactly junk email, it was junk to me. But one of my customers one time sent out to everyone in their address book, including me, and they used the to field instead of blind carbon copy. So they were sending to a lot of people who didn't know each other. All of a sudden, I started to get six, seven jokes a day from someone at an AOL email address, and I had no clue who this person was. I never heard of them, I never asked them to send me emails. I had to do some backtracking, and eventually I discovered that their email address was in that to field that one of my customers sent out. For me, six or seven jokes a day is junk. I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't have time to read six or seven jokes a day. I had to mark that email address as junk. And then from then on, anything he sent me just went right into the spam or junk folder. Be careful. If you send to people who don't know each other, please use BCC, blind carbon copy, so that other people don't do what this man did, was pick up my email address and start sending me all kinds of garbage that I did not want. Use blind carbon copy. It helps because then spammers can't grab all the email addresses either if your email is intercepted. Remember, our email normally is unencrypted. So if it can be intercepted, it can be read. Email addresses can be seen but not with blind carbon copy. So go ahead, learn to use blind carbon copy on whatever email program you use. And our final step you should take. This is the worst case scenario. Let's just say 
that things are out of hand with spam or junk emails. You just can't go anymore. You just can't take it. Your email inbox is overloaded. You could sit there for hours and mark things spam. Worst case scenario, create a new email address. Give it only to the people that need to know it. Put yourself only on the email list that you need to be on. For instance, if you were one of my customers, I would want you on back on our email list with the new email. And then don't give it to anyone else and delete your old email address. Now that's worst case scenario. You really should try the steps I've given you prior to this one. And this is only if you just can't get control. Remember, we can't eliminate spam or junk. We can only control it. It kind of reminds me in the days when I was a um, assistant manager at a large hotel chain, um, a local franchise, I won't mention the chain, but I was an assistant general manager. And we used to have contracts with our exterminators. No contract from any exterminator ever said, we will eliminate bugs in your hotel. They all said, we will control the bugs in your hotel because it's impossible to eliminate them. People bring them in in their luggage sometimes. They come in in food to the kitchen and in crates. So spam or junk. Remember now, not this spam, but spam emails and junk emails. They cannot be eliminated with our current technology but you can control them. Again, if you learn anything new, would you do me a favor and click on the like icon? Be sure and come back and visit us again. I post computing related videos all the time in an effort to help people make better use of their devices. Thanks and have a good day.